Hi guys, welcome back. Let's talk about a color extracting mechanism from Android called the Android Palette Library. The version 7 Palette Support Library includes the Palette class, which lets you extract prominent colors from an image. For example, a music app could use a palette object to extract the major colors from an album cover and use those colors to build a color coordinated song title card. In this application, we'll be creating an environment where one could pick or snap an image in which corresponding color codes will be extracted from the color palette library. Let's get started. Right here in Android Studio, I have the source and I'll be running through how the structure of the application is. In the build gradle, we need to include some major dependencies. Firstly, the app Corporate version 7, the Android support designs that are, has a lot of design libraries out of the box. Not leaving out the Android support palette, version 7, 25.3.1. You can include a higher version, probably 26.1.0. A lower version as well they all work perfectly we also include the jake button knife so that uh, we're going to the binding of views will be much more easier and uh, we'll write lesser code we'll be using square up picasso to actually uh, load images right there on the view so with all this you're ready to set up your first image extracting process from here, you just sync your application and get started. So I'll be heading straight to the layout so that we could understand how the structure or the layout of the application will look like. The activity main XML, which is the launcher, all wrapped around the coordinator layout. We have the Arbra layout uh, with the toolbar. So we all understand how that uh, sits. And now let's look at uh, the relative layout that houses uh, the image view, uh, the color grids, and also the floating action button. We have some paddings around this uh, view at the top, bottom, left and right, all 16 dps. After that, an image view uh, where we're actually going to uh, display the picture in question. Uh, it's uh, layout width of match parent by the height is 200 dp we have a static height for that after that we have a text view just telling us uh a description that's the color information so we're going to have that uh, set up and now we have the grid view where we're going to display the extracted color codes uh, right there in different uh grid so you have that set up and we have a closing relative layout. So we get to look at the floating action button, uh, FAB normally, and we add an elevation of 60p to that. And uh, it's actually going to sit at the bottom right hand corner. So cool, a closing coordinator layout. We have the fragment picker. This fragment picker, it's actually going to serve like a view or it's not an activity, it's a fragment uh, where we could uh, take a picture, pick an image, do some other things. So we have two buttons here to pick an image and the second button to take a photo or take a picture. A swatch view, uh, which actually going to uh, depict uh, the different color view and uh, the text view of the color code in extra decimal. As we all know our color code sits so that's uh, fine and an XML for the web view and for the floating action button so we understand what we expect uh, to our, our application to look like diving down to the Java classes the main activity the launcher we have the picker fragment that handles the fragment picker the swatch adapter out of the box that helps are uh, to work with the palette and also this the color swatch view. Let's start from the main activity. 
in the main activity, we extend activity, you can extend app compact activity or who. We use the button knife inject view to actually bind the floating action button to its ID. Also, we did that to the grid view and to the toolbar. You can see them right there. We declare the swatch adapter class, we create an object from that called swatch adapter. We get to use that in the course of binding. In the uncreate view, set the content view to the activity main and we call the button knife inject to this class. Also set the title to the app name. The uncreate options menu, that's for the uh, toolbar, uh, been declared and on option items selected as well. We only have one, which is the action settings. So we're actually not uh, working much on the toolbar. Our focus now is going to be the floating action button, the image view and the grid. On click of the floating action button, you can see that the on click from button I, uh, FAB. What's going to happen? We have a snack bar that uh, actually triggers that you've actually clicked uh, the FAB. And it's actually going to call the fragment manager over here, uh, where you get a fragment manager and points down to the picker fragment. We'll get to look at the picker fragment immediately after this uh, class. And uh, we also have the, the create palette. Uh, this is where you actually uh, create the palette itself. It takes one parameter, the image URI. That's the link to the image uh, you are picking. You initialize the image view and uh, you use Picasso to actually load this image URI to the image view. So we're going to do an async uh, activity or we'll call it an async tax, where you're going to firstly uh, call the input stream to get the content resolver of the image URI, which you can see here, pointing to the image URI, pass that to us an input stream. Now you need to decode that particular stream and convert that to bitmap using the bitmap factory. So that's cool. So you have a bitmap already. Now uh, you can point down to the palette which uh, actually calls this method from the bitmap, you now generate that palette where you need to instantiate the palette async listener. Once you do that, you need to override one method which is ungenerated that takes in the palette object. Now we use the hash map to uh, generic uh, data type, string and integer. We process the palette, we pass in the palette as the parameter, and uh, you call the object entries. Now we have the swatches where you call the entry set and convert that to an array. This is when we need a swatch adapter. You instantiate the class and you pass the entries object, uh, which is uh, the array, as the parameter inclusively with the get app application context that's like this class or because you're actually using a uh, fragment. Now you set the adapter to the grid view, which is the swatch adapter. The swatch adapter helps to bind to the grid view. So that's what that uh, is actually happening. Now let's see the process palette, which was called over here to actually process this particular uh, palette we're getting. We also need the hash map. Now we're going to test for different uh, swatches. Firstly, for get vibrant swatch, get the dark vibrant swatch, get light vibrant swatch, get muted swatch, get dark muted swatch, and get light muted swatch. So those are the different uh, color variation that we'll be looking at in RGB. So that's how we have it set up this way. So it's actually going to extract the different variation uh, down to the map. So the map is actually going to put that right there and we need to return the map object. So that's uh, what we returned over here in the in this year and we convert that to a swatches. So we use that right there and bind it to the adapter. From here, I'll be looking at the picker fragment, which actually helps us to pick a particular image and also uh, it's going to call on the camera 
if you want to use the camera to snap a picture and also get that image extracted. In the uncreate view, there's a fragment. We use the uncreate view and uh, we call on the layout, the fragment picker and a button knife. We inject this view, get the dialog, get a window, get and request the feature. That's the window will have no title. So you return the view. And let's get to look at when you click on the pick image. That's the on click of the image. This is actually uh, the intent to actually pick a photo from the gallery. So you start an activity for results uh, once you pick a picture from a gallery because you're actually expecting a result. So you need to undo that and override an activity result. And uh, you have that. So when you're taking an image, calling a camera into it, that's calling the device camera. You point at the media store action image capture. You also need to start an activity for results as well based on uh, the take picture integer you've declared. Is it that to take picture or pick photo? So we have that uh, set up here. So now we get to look at that in the on activity results. Uh, where you pass in the request code, the result code, and the data, that's the intent, the data itself, uh, intent. You must point to the superclass and pass those parameters as well. Now, you use the switch case to test uh, for if it's a pick photo or actually took the photo from the camera. If you're picking a photo, uh, you get the data from the intent data and you pass that is a URI already, and you uh, will set that to a selected image. This is when we actually pull that right there into the create palette as a parameter of the create palette. Actually, create a palette. Now, if it's take photo, same thing happens. You can actually use that particular picture as well. So, these are just the two ways to actually undo a uh, picture, probably from gallery or from camera. We've all covered that in previous tutorials. In Swatch Adapter, this extends the array adapter. Now we need to bind uh, the data we are getting uh, in swatches uh, down to the grid so that we could be able to see uh, different color uh, code generated from that particular image. We have the get view. Before we proceed there, we have the swatch adapter constructor that takes in the context as this particular uh, application and it takes in an array of swatches in objects. So these are the two parameters. We passed that right there from the main activity. If you can uh, remember from this year, the swatch adapter, when we shade that and we pass the entries, which is the object we actually got because we had, we had to convert that to array from where we process the palette, where we got the map, uh, we return the map object over here. Can you see this? When we return that, we need to convert that to an array. So understand how this works. Now, if the convert view is not equal to null, we call on the uh, the view, that's the swatch view, where we're going to bind data to. Find the view by ID, the color swatch. Now we call the tie to. So the, the color tie to, where we also get its appropriate ID. Now we set the background color to the entry get value, and its color tie to itself. We're going to set the text. How are we going to do that? We get the key from the entry, we concatenate that with the ash sign. Majorly, color codes start with ash. And now the code itself, when we have an integer to exit string or exit decimal, in this exit string, you need to get the value and we actually uh, convert that to uppercase. So it's not going to come in lowercase, just uppercase. The value itself, that's what we need based from the entry uh, object we have right there from the map. You see that right there. So, this is just how uh, we are able to use the palette uh, library version 7 out of the box from 100 to extract different color codes from a particular image. This is actually good for you if you are handling uh, corporate applications and you want to uh, work well with their uh, brand color can easily take up their logo, extract the major colors from the logo, and use that as your primary color, use that as your ascent, 
and uh, also for the dark primary color you can just fix that right there in the color uh, XML and have uh, a branded application good for the UI so if you are actually dealing with serious application that you need to uh, keep with the color standard this is a very good way to extract, extract uh, the color you can do that from any of the brand just pick any one of them and extract the major color from there from there you could be able to determine the kind of color you will use to develop the application to fit the brand so this is very helpful and Andy I'll actually be testing this out uh, right there in an, uh, a device so I'll be showing the screencast uh, so thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout uh, this tutorial and I will implore you to subscribe to my channel have a wonderful time bye bye for now